What's up, YouTube? Timmy's here. Now, here is my opening slash streaming demo where I talk about the films and series that are coming out this week, whether it be a deal, streaming, etc. Alright, now, not a lot of big ones to really talk about. Like, the only big one we have out this week is Venom The Last Dance, where Eddie Brock and the similar, uh, similar uh, Venom go on the run um, when they are hunted by uh, both of their worlds. And the trailer for this has looked a lot of fun. Now, other, obviously, to be honest, the Venom movies are the only are pretty much the only uh, good films out of the Sony Marvel films. Uh, you know, obviously, Madam Web was a bust. Morbius was terrible. Uh, hopefully, Craven the Hunter will be good. Fingers crossed. But the Venom movies has been pretty decent, and the trailers for this look cool. Hopefully, it's good, but we'll see. All right, now on the streaming front, on Netflix we got Family Pack. Uh, which, where um, after discovering a mysterious um card game, a family dr is dressed back into time um to medieval a uh, village where they must fend off dangerous werewolves at each night. Now this definitely looks like let's say Jumanji but with werewolves. That's a good one. It looks like some cool stuff. That's a good one. All right, we also got a film called Canary Black, and no, it has nothing to do with DC. It stars Kate Beckinsale and is from the director of Taken. And also featured the late Ray Stevenson. Is where Every Graves is a CIA agent whose husband has been kidnapped uh, by terrorists. Uh, the the kidnappers uh, blackmail Graves for her um for information that would betray um her country. And the chance of this, like, it could easily be terrible because the director also made other stuff like The Gunman, Peppermint, Freelance, pretty terrible films. Taken is pretty much the best thing he's put out. Oh no. You know, I changed my mind. Peppermint was actually not so bad. But, yeah, his other stuff hasn't been the best. So, hopefully, this could be good, but I'm not expecting much. Alright, on Netflix, we got the film Don't Move, which is produced by Sam Raimi. Uh, it's the plot about a seasoned uh, killer who injects a grieving uh, woman with a paralytic uh, agent. Um, she, must, she must run, fight, and hide before her body completely shuts down. And the trailer for this looks, looks pretty creepy. You know, you also got Kelsey Osbell, who's you might know from uh, from Yellowstone fame, uh, Finn Ridrock, uh from American Horror Story fame is in this. Got some cool cast members, so hopefully it's a good one. All right, now films coming out uh, to theaters. We got Your Monster, which stars Melissa Barrera, uh, as well as Tommy Dewey and Megan Fay. In it, Laura Franco is a young actress enduring a cancer diagnosis. An upsetting relationship break on um, breakup when when she discovers a terrifying yet weirdly charming monster played by Dewey is living in her closet. And the show for this is, does look good. I mean, you got Melissa Barrera, so I'll be watching this for her in general. Uh, looks like definitely looks like a better version of that Alex Pettifer Vanessa Hudgens movie called Beastly. Hopefully, it's a good one. It does look intriguing. All right, other films out we this week we got The Vampire and the Vigilante. Where a beautiful seductress uh, lures unsuspecting victims to a revenant vampire, whilst new, newly converted vampires becomes the untangled with an um, vigilante killer. That's probably gonna be terrible. We got something called Let's Start a Cult. Um, where having missed out on um, having missed out on his cult's long-awaited uh ritual suicide, an obnoxious loser teams up with a bogus ex messiah. To rebuild their uh, doomsday um, commune. I don't know much about that. Uh, we got a film called Deli Fiance. When Jenny's uh, father marries a younger woman, um, her mother goes goes into mama bear mode when she becomes um, suspicious of the young woman's attentions. That sort of looks like a lifetime movie, to be honest. Yeah. And we got a film called All You Need Is Blood. Uh, which stars Neil Sefi, who you might know as uh, Mowgli in John Fafo's Jungle Book. You also got Mina Savari and Eddie Griffin. In it, when a stranger, uh, a strange meter, uh, lands in in his backyard and turns um into of uh, and turns his father into a brain eating zombie. A sixteen year old um aspiring director teams up with his best friends to create the ultimate student film. This kind of looks like, let's say, Clo not Cloverfield, um, Super 8, but with zombies. Definitely getting a bit of that vibe to it. So hopefully it's a good one. Alright, we also got a film called The Film Conclave, which this looks really good. It stars Ray Fiennes and is directed by Orquan the Western Front director Edward Berger. Connor Lawrence is tasked with organ 
scrutinizing the uh, election of the successor to the uh, deceased pope, discover that the former pope has had a secret that must be um, uncovered concerning one of the most uh, one uh, or more of the candidates um, to succeed the um, prophecy. And the trailer for this does look great. I mean, people are like early Oscar um, experts are saying that this could possibly win Ray Fiennes' first ever Oscar, which that would be great to see. You of course got John Lithgow, um, Stanley Tucci, so we've got some good cast members in there. So I'm going for it. Hopefully, it's a good one. All right, we got film, the film Memoir of a Snail, uh, which features the voice talent of Sarah Snook, Cody Smith McPhee, uh, Jackie Weaver, and it's from the same director of the anime film Mary and Max. Here's what's about. After a series of misfortunes, a snail collecting um, melancholic Lonic, uh, Lonic uh, Meshford learns how to confidence uh, with herself and amid the uh, clutter of everyday life. And the show for this does look intriguing. You know, I like the animation. It actually won a couple of animated awards at a couple of festivals. This, you know, obviously we think that maybe uh, the Wild Robot could uh, win the Oscar or maybe Inside Out 2. You know what? This could easily um be the one that actually wins best uh, anime feature at the Oscars. Like they're really this is a major Oscar contender. So hopefully it's a good one though. I have seen it so. <laughs> All right. Also out we got a film called One Mill Followers, where small town uh, Carissa is invited by a popular um influencer to imagine in Thailand to mingle with beautiful people and um build her up, build her up to one to a million followers. Things could take a dark turn when um they un when they discover who the sponsor behind the event is. Yeah, could be interesting. Oh, we got a film called La Cochina, which stars Rooney uh, Mara. Uh, it's where life in New York in a New York City restaurant kitchen during the um lunchtime rush showcase a blend of cultures and uh from around the world. That could be interesting. Oh, we got the documentary called My Name Al is Alfred Hitchcock. Now that I'm I'm interested in. Uh, it re-examines the fast filmography and legacy of one of the 20th century's greatest filmmakers, Alfred Hitchcock, through a new lens, um, through the author's uh, own voice. Yeah, I'll probably give it a go whenever I get a chance to. I mean, Alfred Hitchcock is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. You know, whether they talk about Psycho, The Birds, uh, North by Northwest, like, who doesn't love Alfred Hitchcock? So, I'll definitely want, I'll definitely give this one a go. Oh, we also got a movie called Classify. Which stars Aaron Eckhart and um and Abigail Breslin and Tim Roth. It's where a career CIA hitman who's been solely using the classified section of newspaper to receive orders discovers his um that his divisions actually been shut down for years. Now that could be interesting, but Aaron Eckhart lately has not put out been in some of the best stuff, so yeah. Alright, we also got a film called Ma uh, Magpie, which stars Daisy Ridley from Star Wars fame. Uh, now, it's about a father who chaperones his, uh, his daughter, uh, who, who is co-starring in a film with a popular actress. While his uh, wife is home with their newborn, he soon finds himself falling in love with the actress. Now, Daisy Ridley is a pretty good actress, so, so I'll probably give this a go down the line, but, you know. Alright. Now, on the TV front, on Netflix, we got Territory, which is actually from the Belko Experiment and Wolf Creek director, Greg McLean. When the world's largest livestock uh, farm is left uh, without a successor, the most powerful uh, factions in the Australian outback miners, landowners, cowboys, and gangsters start preparing their weapons. So, pretty much like an Australian, it kind of looks, um, feels like an Australian, uh, an Australian Yellowstone. Definitely getting a little bit of Yellowstone vibe there. Uh, we also got the comeback, the 2004 Red Sox, coming to Netflix. With the 2004 Boston um, Red Sox team um, that made history as told by those who left them. That could be interesting. Uh, we got another sports docu this week. We got Simone Biles Rising Part 2. Of course, um, Part 1 premiered back in July, and now Part 2 is premiered this week. Uh, we also got the, docu the um, Zodiac docuseries. This is the Zodiac speaking. The three-part docuseries explores the identity of the Zodiac Killer, a serial killer who murdered five people in California's Bay Area in 1960s, 
The series features interviews and clues from a family who knew the prime suspect, Dr. Lee Allen, and connects evidence to um, link Allen um, to the murders. Now, we've obviously seen Zodiac stories told before, you know, uh, going over back to the, um, obviously, a very popular one is the uh, um, David Fitcher one. So, I don't know. You, you can actually even hear, like, see videos where you can actually hear his uh, talking. So, very, this is probably going to be disturbing. Alright, also, we got Star Trek Lower Decks, the final season, coming to Paramount Plus. Uh, Tyler Perry's Beauty in the Black, which, um, now, this is supposed to do part one. There's a part two, um, I think in November. It's where Shipper's fate is, uh, take a, takes a turn when she crosses path with a wealthy, dysfunctional family behind on uh, Cosmetics Dynasty and has the deepest, uh, tr trafficking scheme. Now, of course, this is from Tyler Perry, and I saw the pre for this. This looks terrible. I, I'm sorry, it just looks, it looks awful. The, nothing about it really fascinates me. The characters don't look all that interesting. It's a shame that Tyler Perry's doing these types of stuff. Like, I've always liked Tyler Perry, but lately, he hasn't put out some of the best stuff lately. So, yeah, this is not probably not interested in, but we'll see. All right, we also, on Amazon, we got Like a Dragon, Yukara. Set in 1995 and 05, chronicles a Yuzaza's warrior's life, his childhood ties, and the consequences of his compromising sense of justice and duty. That could be interesting. Oh, we also got Lionless Season 2 coming to Paramount Plus, which of course stars uh, Zoe um, Saldana, Nicole Kidman, Morgan Freeman. The first season wasn't so bad, so interesting to check out the second. Alright, on Apple Plus, we also got this show called Before, which stars Billy Crystal, Judith Light, and Rosie Perez. Is where Eli, who's a child psychiatrist who, after recently losing his wife, encounters a troubled young boy who uh, seems to have a haunting um, connection to Eli's past. As Eli attempts to uh, help the uh, child, the mysterious bond um, deepens. And that does look a dream. You know, of course, you got Billy Crystal, who I th really interested to see him do a horror show like this. I mean, who doesn't love Billy Crystal? So seeing him do something like this. Piques my interest, so hopefully it's a good one here. But that's pretty much it. Let me let you guys, which of these films or series are you interested in? You know, are you interested in seeing uh, Venom The Last Dance, uh, Canary Black, Don't Move, uh, Before? Drop comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. This is it.